Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand MOS capacitance. We know that in order to study the transient response or AC response of my MOS device, I need to find the value of its capacitance. And that is what we are going to do in this clip. MOS capacitance ideally are very difficult to be predicted because it requires the geometry of my device or layout geometry which is a part of physical design and the manufacturing process. Ideally they are very complicated but here we will use a simple approximation and find this values of this capacitance. Now we know that there are going to be two types of capacitance which are going to be present. One is going to be the MOS capacitance or the parasitic capacitance or the device capacitance. So MOS capacitance also known as parasitic. Parasitic means unwanted. Parasitic device capacitance related to the device this capacitance are present. And the other one is interconnect capacitance. Interconnect capacitance is nothing but the wired capacitance between two different MOSFETs when the connections are made. Again, in this clip, we are not going to focus on interconnect capacitance. We are going to focus on device parasitic capacitance. In order to understand the parasitic capacitance, we need to understand the top view of my NMOS or PMOS. This is the cross-sectional view of my NMOS where this is nothing but my P substrate, diffusion, N-type, source and drain oxide gate and here the input connections would be made this V plus are nothing but channel stop implant in case you have two NMOSs on the same substrate what will happen is between that NMOS diffusion and this NMOS there can be a very strong possibility that the channel will be formed in order to avoid that because it's an unwanted channel we have a channel stop implant at both the places this is nothing but the top view of my NMOS where this is nothing but my gate, diffusion, diffusion. There's the width of my diffusion, there's the length of my diffusion, y. And if you see, there's some portion of source which overlaps with the gate and some portion of drain also which overlaps with the gate, which I have mentioned with length of LD and they are both going to be same because of the symmetricity. So what can I predict from here as my total length of my channel? So L is going to be LM minus twice LD because of the overlap LD correct with that now we are all set to start understanding that parasitic capacitance in a MOSFET are also classified into two types one is oxide capacitance another one is junction capacitance in this clip we are going to study oxide capacitance in details and in the next clip we will be studying junction capacitance now what are the different capacitance which we are going to be concerned with is nothing but correct we are more concerned with CGS, CGD and CGB. B is bulk or body. Now we know that these capacitance are the capacitance which are formed due to the interaction between the gate voltage and the channel charge. In simple words, when there is a positive gate voltage or some voltage applied at its gate, a channel would be formed between the source and the drain. So I'm more concerned with the gate terminal when its channel is formed or when the channel is not formed. So gate terminal with body, gate terminal with drain and gate terminal with source. And technically this is, this CGS or CGD is nothing but, CGS is actually the gate to channel capacitance seen between the gate and the source terminal. And CGD is nothing but gate to channel capacitance seen between the gate and the drain terminal. I repeat, CGS, is gate to source correct and CGT is gate to drain so this is nothing but gate to channel capacitance this is also gate to channel capacitance seen between gate and source terminal this is seen between gate and drain terminal remember that it's basically a gate to channel capacitance seen between gate to source and gate to drain so here we are all set to start before we go into region A of operation which is nothing but my cutoff region we know that Without any external voltage also, there is some overlap of gate with the source and some overlap of gate with the drain. So let's find CGS overlap capacitance which are independent of any external voltage. And let's also find out CGD overlap capacitance. It's nothing but COX, oxide capacitance, into the length and the width. Let's see what is the length and the width of my diffusion. So this is nothing but my overlap right so the length is only ld 
whereas the width is W. So this gives me CGS overlap. Similarly, CGD overlap is nothing but oxide capacitance into len, which is LD into W. Remember this both are voltage independent capacitance. No external voltage is present, but still this will be there because of the overlap where COX is nothing but permittivity of the oxide upon the thickness oxide. Keep this in mind. So now we start with region A, which is a cutoff region. In the cutoff region, we know that no channel is formed. So because there is no channel formed, by definition, CGS is nothing but gate to channel seen. What is the definition we have seen? It's nothing but the gate to channel capacitance seen between the gate and source. But there is no gate to channel capacitance only, correct? Because there is no channel. So CGS is zero. CGD again would be zero. CGV would be present. CGB, because there's no channel, so whatever is the capacitance of the SiO2 is between the gate and the substrate, so CGB is present, which is nothing but COX. What is the width of my channel? W. What is the length of my channel? L. So in cutoff region, because there is no channel formed, source and drain don't see any capacitance, so that values are zero, whereas the capacitance SiO2 is present between the gate and the substrate, which is given by COX oxide capacitance into the width of my channel and the length of my channel. So I got my capacitance in the cutoff region. Let's go ahead. Let's see what will be my capacitance in the linear region. Linear region. In linear region, a channel is formed. Technically, this is like this. A complete channel is formed. Correct? So this is all shaded. It's not saturation, it's linear. So uniform channel is present. Correct? And when there is a uniform channel present, we understand that this channel isolates the substrate from the gate or it shields the substrate from the gate. So now there is no gate to body capacitance because of the channel. The channel is terminating, isolating or shielding your gate from the substrate. So CGB is zero. Now CGS and CGD by definition is nothing but gate to channel capacitance seen between the gate and the source terminal. So technically we can presume that the capacitance now initially which was present it's getting divided between CGS and CGD because the uniform channel is present. So the capacitance which was present earlier say COX W by L W into L is now half of it goes to the source and half of it goes to the drain because the capacitance is divided between the gate to source and the gate to drain. So this is nothing but COX W by L because a uniform channel is formed. Half COX W by L. This is approximate mind you. Correct? So this gives me my capacitance in the linear region. Let's go ahead and see the capacitance in the saturation region. In saturation region we know that the channel has pinched off. So again the channel was present and it got pinched off. So this channel had shielded the gate and the body or the gate and the substrate. So still CGB is equal to zero. Remember now there is no connection of channel with the drain. So from the drain and the between the gate and the drain terminal, I don't see a channel which is connected or no capacitance is present. So CGD is also equal to zero. So the only capacitance which will be present in saturation region would be approximately CGS, which would be approximately nothing but if you see, this is nothing but a trapezoidal shape. And if we do some derivation, we'll come to know that this is nothing but the value of the capacitance is 2 by 3 COX W by L. Simulations and derivations are beyond the scope. So you'll have to remember that this trapezoidal shape channel has a capacitance of 2 by 3 COX W into L. This is nothing but CGS because that is what you are seeing the gate to channel capacitance between the gate and the source terminal. So with that, I got all my capacitance and now I'll go ahead and fill the table. So in cutoff region, let's see what is CGB. We have already seen CGB total was in cutoff was nothing but COX into W into L. At that point of time, the capacitance in linear was zero and in saturation was zero. But we know that irrespective of the voltages, correct? There is some overlap capacitance which is present. Remember this. So CGD in cutoff, we saw that it was zero. In linear, it was half COX W into L. And in saturation, it was again zero. But mind you, there was overlap 
CGD overlap. So we are finding the total, right? So this is nothing but COX W into LD. This is also nothing but plus COX W into LD. This is also nothing but plus COX W into LD. CGS total is nothing but in cutoff it was zero again. In linear it was half COX W into L. We assumed that the capacitance is divided equally because the channel is uniform towards the drain and the source. And in saturation, because of the trapezoidal, it was 2 by 3 COX into W into L. Now plus the overlap ones, which we need to just mention. COX, W into LD, same COX, I beg your pardon, yes, LD, because we have used the LD as the length of the overlap, plus COX, W into LD, plus COX, W into LD. So this is my overlap capacitance. In summary, if I have to draw the graph of cutoff, saturation and linear region and ignoring the overlap capacitance, we know that, and this is a normalized value of capacitance, remember. So I can take one, one by three, two by three, because it's a normalized value. So in cutoff, we know that CGB is equal to COXWL, that is nothing but equal to one. In saturation, it goes to zero and it stays to zero in linear. So red color gives me CGB. Green, CGS where we know that in cutoff, CGS is zero. In saturation, CGS is two by three COX W by L. While we normalize, it's nothing but two by three. And in linear, it's half, which I have shown. So this is CGS. And blue gives me CGD, which we know that in cutoff, it's zero. In saturation, also it's zero, because now the channel is not connected to the train. And in linear region, it's nothing but half COX W into L, which is normalized to half. So these are my values and this is my graph of MOS capacitance. This is nothing but oxide related capacitance, CGS, CGD, CGB. I hope you have followed this. Okay, in summary, this is what is oxide capacitance, which we study in details. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for junction capacitance and take care.